Hey world changers, Miss McCarthy here with your Florida Fast Math Freebie of the Week. Now I've created this weekly math video series to help you feel calm and confident when it's time to throw down your best on Florida's Fast Math Assessment. Each week we'll practice a specific question type. Now these videos, they're meant to be short, sweet, and to the point. And if you know that you need more support with the skill that we're working on today, I'll show you where you can access more videos to help you at the end of this video. The question type that we are going to work on this week is, drum roll, multi-select. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get to it and let me teach ya. All right, fifth grade, here is your problem for the week. So go ahead and pause the video and give it your very, 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 very best. Your best effort, make sure you're showing your journey on paper. And then when you're ready, press play and let's go over it together. All right, fifth grade, welcome back. So this is how I would have tackled this problem. So this one says that a theme park has two lines for passengers to choose from in order to ride the shuttle back to their vehicles. 1,248 passengers are waiting in the yellow line. Each shuttle for the yellow line can hold 50 passengers. 1,019 passengers are waiting in the green line. Each shuttle for the green line can hold 60 passengers. Select all, that means to try all. Select all of the statements that are true or correct about the scenario above. The scenario is what they've given us up there. Okay, that is very, 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 very wordy up there. There's a lot of numbers. There's two different options that passengers can choose from. My brain is a little bit like, what? All I know is that there's a theme park, there's two lines and you have to get shuttles and there's passengers that need to get back to their vehicles. That's what I know right now. That's the gist of the problem. What I'm gonna do next is take it line by line, sentence by sentence, and do a quick drawing so my brain can make sense of it. All right, so it says a theme park has two lines to choose from. We've got the yellow line, yellow line, and the green line, so passengers can choose. I got that part, but let me go back. It has two lines to ride back to their vehicles. 1,248 passengers are waiting in the yellow line. So I'm just going to write right here, 1,248 passengers. Each shuttle for the yellow line, I'm gonna draw here a little shuttle, okay? <laughs> that is an amazing shuttle, I'm just saying. So each shuttle for the yellow line can hold 50 passengers, okay? I'm just gonna put 50 passengers right there. So we have a lot of passengers and we can fit 50 on the yellow shuttle at a time. The green line, we've got 1,019 passengers are waiting in the green line and each shuttle can hold 60 passengers. So these shuttles are a little bit bigger and we also have less people in the green line. So now we need to select all the statements that are true about this situation. This is definitely helping it to make sense to me. Let's go ahead and get an idea for what the statements are saying, okay? For instance, the first one says, 42 shuttles are needed to transport all of the passengers in both lines. Here I can even see the number of shuttles that are needed to transport. Do you see how all of them say this? Okay, we're trying to figure out how many are needed to, to transport in both lines, in the yellow line, and in the green line. So basically what we need to do is figure out how many shuttles we'll need for the yellow line and how many shuttles we'll need for the green line. And we will definitely need to combine those in a little bit to see if that works there. So I'm gonna scroll up from this problem because I have workspace down here and we're gonna start working this out. So let's figure out how many shuttles we'll need for the yellow line first. So I know that we have 1,248 passengers in the yellow line that we need to put onto shuttles. So 50, 50, 50, 50 until all the passengers are gone. So if we know the total amount and we're separating them into groups, which operation are we doing? Division, right? We're dividing here. 
which means that we have 1,248 divided by 50. We're trying to figure out what that equals. So I'm going to use the partial quotients method to solve this. You may have used any method. You may have used long division, an area model, or partial quotients, or some other kind of form. As long as you perform the correct division, you, we should both arrive at the same answer, okay? So here, I know that, let's see, 15 times one is 50, 50 times two is 100, and you know what? I know that I could take away 100 there, which means I'd be multiplying by two, but hold on for me. If 50 times two equals 100, 50 times 20 equals 1,000, and that's a big chunk to separate. Okay, so now I have 248 left. All right, I know that I could do um, times two again would get me 100. And then times two again would get me another 100. And then we would have 48 remaining. And that represents the 48 passengers that would be remaining. So with this, we would need plus one more shuttle. Okay, so if we add that all up, that would be 20 plus four is 24. We would need 24 shuttles with a remainder of 48 people. So we would need 25 shuttles for the yellow line, okay? Okay, now for the green line, we've got 1,119 passengers that we can divide into groups of 60. So let's make our divisor out here of 60. This is how I'm choosing to solve it. Okay, and I'm see 60, 120. So I know that I could take 60 with a space right there. That would be times one, but if I did times 10, that would be 600 and that would make it a bigger chunk for me to take away. And that would be 419 remaining. If I kept going here, that would be 180, 240, 300, 360, and then 420 is close, but not, not too much. So here that would be, we could put 360 there and that would be one, two, three, four, five, six times. Subtract and we get 59 remaining. Okay, so that is how many passengers are remaining, so we would still need plus one shuttle for those remaining passengers, which means that we would need 16. So 1,019 divided by 60 means that we need 16 shuttles with a remainder of 59 or 17 shuttles. We have to round up there. Okay. Now that we've done all that work, let's go see what we've got. Let's go down. I'm going to come back to these two in just a second because they're talking about both lines and that's where I'd have to combine them, right? But here it says, for the third choice, it says 24 shuttles are needed to transport everyone in the yellow line. Was it 24 or was it 25 shuttles? Yeah, it was 25 because we had a remainder that still needed a shuttle to get home. So 25 would be our answer here, and we can eliminate that one. Next, we have 16 or 17 shuttles are needed for the green line. Well, we said over here that we had 16 with a remainder of 59 passengers, so we would need 17 shuttles, not 16. Now let's go back to the first two answer choices. We have 42 shuttles and 21 shuttles to transport all of them. So that would be combining 25 and 17, which would be 42 shuttles that are needed in all. So we can go ahead and mark that first one and eliminate right there, okay? I know that was a lot of work, so if you need to rewind and go back and get any of the notes done, that is the power of having a video lesson is that you can rewind. So go ahead and make sure you have these notes copied, and if you know that you need more help with division, I'm going to point you in the right direction right now. Now here's a message for the grown-ups in your life. 
If you are a teacher, parent, or educational leader looking to support your students with more practice in a safe environment, follow me over to McCarthyMathAcademy.com for tons of math videos specifically geared towards Florida's best standards. Just know that I would love the opportunity to make math fun, make it click, and make it stick for your students. So make sure that you check out the link somewhere around this video. I know it's almost time to go, but before we go, let me remind you that practice is not something we do once we're good. It's the one thing we do that makes us good. If you want to get better, stronger, or more confident with anything, you've got to put in the practice. You've got to make time and throw down your best effort. I believe in you, and I cannot wait to see you next time, world changers. Bye!